This is Accessory to Success, a website for business leaders, authors, book enthusiasts. You know, we review a lot of books on this website, and one of the things we get is a lot of great tidbits that we package up and deliver to you through email as LinkedIn posts. A lot of people aren't sure what to post on LinkedIn, so if you subscribe to our email, you'll be able to receive ideas of what to copy, paste, and post in LinkedIn with no thought. You don't have to credit us or anything. It's just a service to help provide some value and solve the problem of what to do on LinkedIn. Give that a look. Today, we are giving a book review on winning through intimidation. Uh, it's really about negotiation strategies. Um, the main takeaway for the book Business environment is always cutthroat, and intimidation is more rampant than one would think. You're either intimidated or intimidating, and this defines your position in the company as weak or strong. Despite the title, this book is about how to intimidate others to win. It is more about being alert and aware to prevent oneself from being bullied by practitioners of intimidation. The book is pretty old, but... I love the way it's written. I think it's timeless, a classic sales book. It was a fun read too, uh, with great deal stories. The what you'll learn section is uh, the importance of being organized and prepared. Uh, prepared equals confidence, which equals happiness, which equals impacting and benefiting others around you. Accept the reality that you will face intimidation and become prepared to deal with it. Three types of people you will come across in life. Type one, openly declaring they are out to fleece you out of your money. Type two, wolves in sheep's clothing who will attack you when you least expect it. And type three, those who start out with good intentions, but when the going gets tough, they will make you a sacrificial lamb. How to identify the three types and how to protect yourself. On to the book summary for winning through intimidation. The author Ringer is pessimist with a no-nonsense attitude, and he writes that way. He had some really interesting things to say as well as some great perspectives. One of the things that he talks about in his book is the ice ball theory. The ice ball theory in uh, 50 million years, the sun is going to die, the earth will die, and everybody's going to be dead. So... What does it matter if you end up putting yourself out there and cold calling someone or starting a business and failing or closing a deal or not? It doesn't really matter because in 50 million years, no one's going to remember you and the earth will be completely dead. From one perspective, this is a very negative way to look at life. From another, it is freeing. It's a good perspective to keep in the back of your mind when you have what Seth Godin calls the resistance, barking at you about whether you should do something or not. His book for that is Lynchpin. Shares much more details on it. Ringer is a pessimist. Again, his perspective is very controlled and narrow, which is good if you're just trying to accomplish a goal or task without having negative thoughts and concepts hindering you and getting in your way. Here's one of his perspectives that he has on the working world and the common mindset of people going into it. The business world is a very tough place. You need to be more controlled with your mental state and the way that you allow yourself to think about others. This book talks a lot about that. Ringer says, The illusions created by the oftentimes flowery and enthusiastic people are exciting. But the reality that confronts a man when he goes out into the business world jungle and gets clawed and kicked is quite another thing. Striving for a positive mental attitude will get you nowhere unless you have the ammunition to back it up. You develop a positive mental attitude, Robert believes, by being prepared, by understanding the realities of what it takes to succeed, and by being well-versed in the necessary techniques to get you there. Another strategy for mental preparation for outcomes can be found in the book How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. It's a cycle. The more prepared a person is, the more positive their attitude, and therefore, the better their chances of succeeding. As a salesperson, Robert realizes that salespeople can lose deals all the time. It's very hard to sell. 
So keeping a positive mental attitude for him is all about being prepared understanding and properly implementing all the techniques and strategies you need to be confident enough that potential customers can see it. Once you're confident, then you can go out with your head held high and do battle over and over without fading out or giving up. The theory of sustenance of a positive attitude through the assumption of a negative result. Remember, Robert Ringer is a salesman, and this is a book about sales and closing business, making quota. That means facing rejection. That said, he's always assuming that he's not going to win something, that the deal won't close or he won't win the sales contest. Through that assumed loss, he's able to maintain a positive attitude because he's working his hardest. But if he loses something because there is no so many factors out there out of his control, he's not necessarily heartbroken. He doesn't lose his positive attitude towards his craft because he already had the prospect of gain written off as a loss. Negative outlook plus preparation equals positive attitude. As Ray Dalio says in his book Principles, you can't predict, but we can prepare. So prepare for the worst possible outcome mentally, and you won't be let down if it happens. That will help you keep a positive mental attitude. Three types theory. Type number one. This person lets you know right away through their words and actions that he is definitely out to get their chips. Not some of them, all of them. Chips, of course, being money. Type number two, this type of uh, person assures you that he's not interested in getting your chips. And he usually assures you that he wants to see you get everything that you deserve. Then, when everything is said and done, He acts just like type number one and tries to take all your chips anyway. Type number three. This type also tells you that he's not interested in your chips. The difference here is that unlike the second type, he actually means it. That is the only difference though. Circumstances arise that always come down to simply rationalizing what's right and wrong. And type number three, like the others, still ends up trying to get your chips. That is Ringer's attitude towards everything in business. To him, life is all about protecting yourself, being prepared for situations that can arise, and being confident in your abilities through knowledge. Another wonderful sales book that speaks to some of these subjects is Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. About the author Robert Ringer. Robert Ringer is an American entrepreneur, motivational and political speaker, and author of several best-selling personal development and political books. Winning Through Intimidation was his first book. It faced 23 rejections from publishers. Ringer went on to publish the book himself, and it became a bestseller in no time. It spent 36 weeks at the top of the New York Times bestseller list. He has written many other successful books as well. Ringer has appeared on The Tonight Show, Today, The Dennis Miller Show, Good Morning America, ABC Nightline, and The Charlie Rose Show, as well as Fox News and Fox Business. He's been the subject and feature of, of featured articles in such matters, publications as Time, People, The Wall Street Journal, Fortune, Barron's, and The New York Times. This has been a book review of Winning Through Intimidation by Robert Ringer. This is Accessory to Success. There's many other books mentioned in this article. Feel free to go over to the blog post and find links to those. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.